Thank you for tuning in to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Whether you're listening during your commute, while working out, or just relaxing at home, we appreciate you. Every download, every listen, and every subscription means a lot. Up next, the 12 Kyle podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Man, check this out. (laughs) On this episode, what I want to talk about is, do you remember? Let's take a trip down memory lane. Now, for some of you listening and watching, thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate it. Uh, If you are watching, you may see that I'm not in my normal place when it comes to recording. I'm actually sitting outside. So if you hear birds chirping or if you hear a car go by or if you hear some badass kid bouncing a ball, (laughs) it's because I'm outside and not in my regular normal studio. Uh, I wanted to record outside because of the topic. And plus, it's a nice day. It's not hot. It's not cold. Uh, (laughs) Fall is upon us. So why not be outside? Nonetheless, I want to go back. And what I mean by that is I saw a a post on Instagram. Uh, someone actually sent it to me. And it talked about some of the things that we did growing up. And when I say we, I mean Generation X. Because I think that's the generation that I'm in, Generation X. And life was just a little bit different. It was just a little bit simple. Uh, I say on this podcast all the time is that we were the last generation to live without the Internet. And what that did is it molded us in a different way. So while we are happy to have cell phones, uh, we're not necessarily attached to our cell phones. Um, While we're happy with technology, a lot of us aren't necessarily bound or stuck to the technology that we live with on on a day to day basis. Um, Case in point, like for me, I enjoy social media. I don't enjoy it as much as I used to, but the difference is, you know, I didn't grow up with social media, so I didn't have to have Twitter and my friends weren't all the people that I knew in my phone. (laughs) My friends were the people in my neighborhood. So that being said, after seeing that meme, I was like, you know what? Let's go outside. Let's record. Let's talk about. Uh, just some of the things that I remember uh, from growing up. Um, And if you came up in this era or a similar era that I did, uh, some of this stuff, or at least most of the stuff, you will be able to identify with. with. Um, With that being said, do you remember, do you remember being the human remote control? (laughs) What I mean by that is there was a point in time where the TV you actually had to get up and press the buttons to change the channel. I remember that time. And there was one point in time where I was the human remote control. In fact, I can go back a little bit further to where I remember when we only had like four channels on TV. You had NBC, you had ABC, you had CBS, and I think PBS. (laughs) And that was it, right? So there weren't Uh, a multitude of channels. And then subsequently, I think in 1981, we got cable TV and that changed everything. But even getting cable TV, our box for the channels was, it had to sit on top of our TV. So you literally and figuratively had to get up. And if you wanted to change the channel from CBS to, I don't know, USA, you had to press the button. So there was no remote control to change it. So I remember being the human remote because what happens is as a period, as time went on, uh, your parents didn't want to get up. So they'd say, hey, can you change the channel to NBC? Can you turn the game on? That type of thing. So uh, I remember that. Do you remember calling collect? Now, you have to be a certain age to call collect or at least remember calling collect. Remember calling people collect? For those of you who don't know or don't remember or weren't around, a collect call would mean, okay, 
I'm here in this place. Let's say I'm in South Carolina. I'm calling, I don't know, let's just say King Germ. I'm calling King Germ and he's in Florida. I'm not paying for the phone call because it, this is what we call a long dis- distance call, kids. A long distance call means that the call is going to cost somebody, <laughs> right? So instead of me picking up the phone and just dialing King Germ's number, I call collect. And when he answers the phone, there's an operator that's going to come on the call and say, you have a collect call from 12 Kyle. Are you going to accept the charges? And if he says yes, he's responsible fiscally (laughs) for however long this conversation goes. And if we talk for 20 minutes and it's and it's a dollar a minute, then that's a twenty dollar phone call that he has to pay. It doesn't appear on my phone bill or maybe it does, but. I'm not paying for it. Right. So the onus is on the person who accepts the call to pay for it. Do you remember collect calls? Um, And even thinking about collect calls, I got another one. Do you remember pay phones? Very novel concept. Pay phone. You would go (laughs) and there would be one on the side of the street and you'd have to have either a quarter or a dime or both, depending on how much the pay phone was. And you'd have to put the money into the phone and you could call someone from a pay phone. Uh, pay phones probably became, I think I remember seeing my last pay phone in like the year 2000. I was riding around downtown Atlanta and I saw one and I got out the car just to take a picture of it. And it wasn't even like a thing. I don't even know what I did with the picture um, because I actually took that picture with a camera, not with my phone because technology, right? <laughs> So, um, yeah, collect calls uh, using pay phones. Pay phones were ill. I, I, I think I do remember using the pay phone a lot when I had a pager. Uh, you would page me on the hit me on the hip. And I would I, listen. I rode around Atlanta <laughs> with a with an ashtray filled with quarters because you never knew when someone was going to page you and you had to page them back or you had to call them back. So. Uh, I did that. So, yeah, just checking to see if you guys guys remember um, pay phones. Um, another thing I want to ask, do you remember? Do you remember watching videos on MTV? Novel concept, right? MTV actually stands for music television. Listen, folks, there was a point in time where MTV actually played music videos. <laughs> I know it did. I know that probably sounds kind of strange, but yeah, there was a time where MTV actually played music videos and we would watch. And I mean, like for me, uh, MTV was a groundbreaker for me, not because of shows like Yo! MTV Raps, which I would become a huge fan of later, but MTV exposed me to music that I had not even I I had no idea it even existed. So you could get a kid from Florence, South Carolina, and he could be watching MTV and be exposed to groups like The Police and Sting or Men at Work or Twisted Sister or Van Halen. I mean, listen, my 80s, my 80s rock bag is, is tremendous. I know all of those songs and I know them because I saw the videos daily on MTV. Now, as hip hop grew and I got into rap and stuff, I got away from rock and roll. And, you know, I don't know many songs past (laughs) past like 1985, 86. But those first couple of years of MTV for me, man, listen, I was locked in. I knew all of the songs um, from Culture Club to Wham to just about anybody that you can name that had a video (laughs) that wasn't black. In the uh, 80s, in the early to mid 80s, I knew him. Um, do you remember? Do you remember cereal boxes having toys in it? Remember when you buy the cereal and then you you dig inside the box, and inside the box would be like some type of toy. Man, those are good old days, man. I remember at one point in time, I think it was Cheerios. They would have inside the box a license plate for your bike i mean i mean the license plate probably was probably about as big as your hand so it wasn't something big and it was obviously it was wrapped up in the packaging but 
to get a license plate for a bike. Now, here's the thing. What's the likelihood <laughs> of you getting a license plate that says your real name? And I mean, I wasn't going to put nobody else's name on my bike. So it didn't make any sense for me to get Cheerios or, or any other cereal that had a license plate. And, you know, because Kyle wasn't coming out. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Uh, Tony, maybe. Kim, definitely. Kyle, mm, not so much. <laughs> um, do you remember not having any type of privacy for your phone calls? Man, listen, by the time I got to middle school, you know, because there were no cell phones, kids, <laughs> You had to talk on your house phone, right? And so the girls would call, or you call the girls. And I mean, I could go, I could try to go in my room, but if you're in your room, your mom's gonna come in there. <laughs> or I remember I would be on my aunt's phone and I would go and in the bathroom, and but the cord, like she had a long cord, like the cord stretched from like room to room. And I would drag the cord. And you'd have the cord kind of sticking through the bathroom door. I'd be on, <laughs> I'd be sitting on the toilet talking. Um, I mean, that's what we did, man. But you had no privacy. There was no such thing as getting to the phone and being alone. Like you, you almost always had to take a call with your mom sitting there, or your brother sitting there. And, you know, and I've talked about this before in this podcast. Uh, you know, I live with my form, my teenage years. I live with my mom, my cousin, Eric, and my brother. And at one point in time, I mean, Eric and I are the same age, but my brother Damon is three years younger than us. And we were all teenagers basically at the same time. And so there was a competition for the phone, you know, so we were kind of fighting to get to the phone. And so, you know, you didn't have that kind of privacy, anything like that. So even if you were able to take a call in your room, somebody was going to bust in there. You couldn't be in there rapping until the sun came up. <laughs> it just wasn't going to happen. So there was no privacy at all. Um, do you remember being sick from school and having to watch TV with whoever was keeping you and all they wanted to do was watch The Price is Right? <laughs> Shout out to the late Bob Barker. Um, yeah, Price is Right, was, that was a staple, man. Like, if you missed the day of school, there was no such thing as, you know, you missing school because you were sick. And you just kind of kicking it, doing what you wanted to do. No, you was going to sit on that couch and you was going to sit with your grandma or you was going to sit with your auntie or you going to sit with your mom or dad, whomever was watching you that particular day. Because here's the thing, kids. If you were sick and did not go to school, somebody had to be at home with you. There was no such thing as staying at home by yourself. That was not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, that, that was something. Speaking of phone, as I mentioned earlier, um, do you remember having the satisfaction of being able to slam the receiver down in somebody's face? Listen, that was beautiful. The kid, the kids these days will never know the satisfaction of hanging up in somebody's face because when you hang up the phone now, it's just, it's just a click. It's not, it's not the same. It ain't when you hung up in somebody's face, they could actually hear you slam the phone. That was one of the best sounds ever, particularly if you didn't like people or somebody made you mad. Listen, there was nothing better than hanging up in their face. Nothing better than hanging up in somebody's face. Um, do you remember? Do you remember looking at the TV guide so you could see what was coming on TV? Man, shout out to the TV guide. Um <laughs> for those of you who don't remember or may not have been around the tv guide was just that nowadays you can probably hit the menu button on your tv screen and it'll tell you everything is coming on for the next 18 days the tv guide was an actual paper book like manual that you could buy in the grocery store and it would have the tv listings of everything that was coming on that particular week and it was just for that week so there was a weekly TV guide every week and it would tell you every single channel, every time, every time slot, everything. And so you were never in the dark as to what was coming on on TV because you had the TV guide. I used to love the TV guide. 
Um, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember getting your favorite albums for one dollar? Being able to get multiple albums for one dollar. Shout out to Columbia House. <laughs> Sometimes it was one cent, right? You could get like 15 albums for one cent. All you had to do was sign up for Columbia House. How they made money, I have no idea because I signed up for Columbia House at least seven or eight times. And I never paid for any of the CDs that I got. <laughs> never. And they were saying, hey, Mr. Kyle, we need your money to be sent to such and such address. No, man, you just sent me the new Eric B. and Rakim. I'm not, I'm not sending you no money. I got the product in my hand. I don't know how or why they did that, but Columbia House was basically, I don't know, giving money away. For, I mean, excuse me, giving products away for free. And, you know, that was probably the start of us as consumers getting music for free and why we never got away from it. Or at least we tried not to get away from it. Um, but I remember that those, those were that was a great time. Um, I tell you what, we got time to take a quick commercial break. On the other side of the break, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the stuff that we remember growing up. Sit tight. We'll be back in just a second. Are you feeling nostalgic for the golden eras of rap and soul music? If so, tune in to the Rap Soul Podcast. We are your weekly journey through the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, spotlighting the music and the hidden gems that shaped the soundtrack of our lives. From the powerful beats to the soulful melodies, we bring you the best of the past with fresh insights and stories. Rediscover the music that defined a generation. Subscribe to the Rap Soul Podcast and enjoy the vibes. And just like that, we are back. It's your boy 12 Kyle. This is the 12 Kyle Podcast. And once again, we're talking about some of the things that we remember growing up. Um, before the break, I gave you some and I'll give you a few more before we get out of here. Um, do you remember spending all day outside unsupervised, but yet you knew when to come home? Listen, I can't tell you how many summers I spent growing up in Florence, South Carolina, and we literally were outside all day long. I mean, like you literally could leave your house at 9 a.m. And you might come home for lunch. But I remember a lot of days I didn't want to come home for lunch because guess what? If you came home for lunch, they may ask you to stay in the house. <laughs> and we didn't care how hot it was. Um, we didn't care anything. We, we were just happy just to be outside because you know what was happening outside? Everything. <laughs> everything was happening outside. There was nothing popping on inside. Everything that was dope was happening outside. You, you, you could not imagine being inside. And one of the worst things that could happen would be for you to be inside and your friends to be outside. But notice what I said. We knew when to come home. Again, you're outside all day unsupervised. You could get on your bike with your friends and you could ride literally five miles. And because we didn't have any type of electronic communication, we didn't have pagers, we didn't have cell phones. Nobody knew where you were. I mean, like there were plenty of times where my mom would step outside and she said, well, hey, where's Kyle? Well, I don't know. He went over here with Eric. And she, they just say he went over there with Eric. Where, wherever over there was, that's where we were. But she didn't have to go looking for us because you know what? We knew when to come home. And when was when was it time to come home? Before the lights came on, before the street lights came on. Listen, if you didn't come home before the street lights came on, there was a good chance you weren't coming back outside the next day. <laughs> That's a given. You weren't coming back outside the next day. Mom did moms didn't play that. None of the moms, none of the dads, they didn't play that. So if you went outside and you got the privilege of being outside all day, cool. You just better know when to bring your ass home. <laughs> um, what else? Do you remember watching after school specials? Listen, I think ABC probably had it locked on ABC on, on after school specials. 
Um, I don't really remember any after school specials on CBS or NBC. There could have been some, but I remember all the dope ones being on ABC. After school specials, I always thought was cool because it gave us a chance to really get a chance to see some type of TV programming specifically meant for us as kids. Um, For as great as, you know, the shows and everything were in the 80s and 90s, uh, not a lot of it before the explosion of cable TV, not a lot of it was designed for young kids. And so the after school specials were your time and they were just that after school. So guess what? If you got home from school at 2.30, after school special might come on at four o'clock so you got time to get home you got time to do your homework you got time to maybe hang out with your friends before the after school special comes on and that was the thing and it was it literally was must see tv for us like we didn't we didn't move or anything like that we had to be there to watch it um do you remember the sad feeling of when your favorite vcr tape was eaten by your vcr man listen I had so many VCR tapes. There was things that I would tape on TV. There was videos that I would tape. And God forbid, if your VCR tape got eaten, all of that information is gone. Like, so you can't get it back. Like, it's one thing to record. Let's just say I recorded Rap City for an entire week. The things, the the, the videos that are going to come on that particular week were priceless. But here's the thing. You're not going to see those videos in that particular sequence of time ever again. So if you lose that tape, you've lost those memories. So I had a couple of times where the VCR ate my tape, man, and I was hot. And for me, there was nobody I could go to to go fix it. It wasn't like your cassette tape. When your cassette tape popped, you could fix it. VCR tapes, mm, not so much. Um, Do you remember... The smelly stickers that you would get when you got good grades. Now, th- th- this could be a South Carolina thing. This could be a Florence thing. I don't know what I'm about to tell you. This could be a Florence thing. I'm not sure. But, 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 when we, <laughs> when, when we got our test graded in elementary school, uh, your teacher would put what we used to call a scratch and sniff on your paper so like let's say you take a a spelling test and you get 100 she might put the apple sticker on your spelling test so it's a scratch and sniff so you scratch it and you sniff it and when you smell it it smells like apples and so like there there was like apple orange cherry um different type of flavors and fruits and stuff like that and it was like kind of like a reward for the kids to do well Uh, Now, obviously, if you got an F on something, you're not getting (laughs) you're not getting a smelly sticker. But the smelly stickers were dope, man. They were so dope. Um, So I really enjoyed it. Hopefully some of you remember that. Maybe you might not. It might have been just something that happened to me in my school. But um, that was the thing. Um, What else? What else? Um, Oh, do you remember calling your friend at their house? but you had to talk to their parents first. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing worse than you calling, hello, can I speak to Tanya? And you had, because you, and that's the thing, and you had to have some type of manners. Hello, or good evening, ma'am, good evening, sir. Uh, is You couldn't say, yo, let me speak to Tanya. That couldn't happen. You got to say, hello, may I speak with Tanya, please? And they could say, well, who's calling? Or they might say, no, you can't talk to her. (laughs) But you had to. There was no such thing as like being able to speak directly to your friends. Um, Even my homeboys. If I called uh, Jay Fresh, I had to talk to his mom first. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? I was like, is uh, is Jay Fresh home? Is he at the crib? Like that. That type of thing. Like, so it's unless your friends answered the phone. But. Looking back on it, I think maybe from the time that I started talking on the phone in middle school (laughs) to all the way through high school, I may, I can count maybe on one hand how many people I know that had their own phone or their own line. Like that was some different shit right there. Like if you had your own line, that was different. Um, 
I know a couple of people, <laughs> and they'll remain nameless. I know a couple of people who had their own line. But here's the thing. If you had your own line, people probably thought you were rich. Like, because that, that really didn't happen. Like, everybody I knew, they shared a line. I mean, the, the house phone was just a house phone. So everybody got calls on that line. It wasn't a situation where 12 Kyle had his own phone line. No. Hell no. If that was the case, I would have been straight. But no, we had a phone. Now, we were fortunate because we had two different lines in our house. But and even that was rare because most people only had one line in their house. But to have to to know a girl who had her own phone line. Oh, man, that's that's beautiful because now you bypass the parents. You don't have to talk to her dad because, you know, the dad is always answering the phone and he's always trying to figure out who this little boy is trying to talk to his daughter. <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> Um, what else? Do you remember? I, I mentioned the VCR tapes earlier. Do you remember having getting a tape from Blockbuster and having to rewind it all the way back before you could take it back? Listen, the younger generation will never know about that because nobody has to rent movies anymore. At least I don't think. Are people still renting movies? They aren't. Okay, okay, just check it. <laughs> I mean, like. That, you know, Netflix does exist. I mean, like, I don't think anybody's written any movies anymore. Um, and I've mentioned on this podcast, and it's worth repeating, uh, my first job was at a video store. Uh, shout out to Video Warehouse. Um, that's where it all got started for me. But, um, and Video Warehouse's uh, main competitor was Blockbuster. Now, the difference between Video Warehouse and uh, Blockbuster was at Video Warehouse, you know, they asked you to rewind the movies, but you didn't have to. <laughs> Blockbuster, oh, you'd get a fine if, if you didn't rewind those movies back. And also, Video Warehouse also sold and rented adult films. Uh, Blockbuster, nah. So, Video Warehouse, you could come and get the good skin flicks. Uh, Blockbuster, no, the most they could do was an R-rated movie, and, and I don't even I don't even think they did NC-17 movies. Um, good times, good times. Uh, what else? What else? Um. <laughs> here's the thing do you remember the original way to block people because now on social media if i want to block you on twitter i can just go to your account hit block if i want to block you on instagram i can just pick your profile and hit block if i want to block you on tiktok same if i want to block you on facebook i can just come up to your profile hit block, unfriend, whatever the case may be. The original block, or at least the original way to block people, you take your phone off the hook. <laughs> yeah, man, you take your phone off the hook. And that way, no one, that way no one could get in contact with you. Think about it. Your phone is your, your house phone is your basic means of people getting in contact with you. And so if you take the phone off the hook, well, they can't get in contact with you anymore. That was the original block, man. That was the original block. Um, do you remember reading roadmaps? Now, some of you probably never read a roadmap or knew how to read a roadmap, but yours truly, listen, I loved reading roadmaps. Um, I was always and still am a, a big geography buff. Uh, and so like when we would go on road trips, I mentioned this on the road trips episode. Um, it was important for me to look at the roadmaps to see where we were going, because even though I wasn't driving because I was a kid, but it was just important. And I learned to, I learned a lot about cities, how to get certain places, um, traveling up interstate 95, uh, North and South. Uh, I learned how to navigate through and get around this is, and keep in mind folks, this was before. <laughs> GPS. This was even before MapQuest uh, in the 90s. In the 80s, we had roadmaps. And, um, you know, I learned about cities. I would just pull up random cities. I could pull up LA or Dallas and tell you how to get around those cities because I studied roadmaps of those cities before we went to those cities. And, um, and so even like when I moved here to Atlanta in the summer of 1997, 
I kind of knew my way around. I knew some of the streets. I'll put it like that. I, I, I'd come here before in college, but I also, from years of reading maps, when I was a kid, I knew about some of the cities in Atlanta. Excuse me, no, some of the streets in Atlanta because I'd read it on road maps. Um, and I don't even know, do they still make road maps? <laughs> if they still make road maps, I may just buy one just to have it. And, and I know it's antiquated and it's outdated and everything because you because GPS, Waze, whatever you want to use. I mean, it, you can pull it up on your phone. Google Maps, all of that stuff is on your phone. Um, but I love actually looking at maps. Um, do you remember photo albums? Man, listen, photo albums were the joint. And it's interesting because in my house right now, I have several photo albums. Um, I probably said we got at least 20, 25 photo albums. And that's photo albums of like, not just me as a child, but my adolescence. And then some of my wife, Sharice and her adolescence, and then our time together. And then we have photo albums of our kids. But what's interesting is, uh, <laughs> and this just shows you how technology goes. Our first child, our son Dion, was born in 1999, right? And so we've got mad photos of Dion in this photo album. Um, but our last child, Skylar, she was born in 2011. Her photo album book is very small. Why? Because all of her pictures are online. We took all of the pictures, or at least most of the pictures we took with our phones. And so, like, I'm always concerned about what to do with those pictures because, like, over a period of time, if I ever delete, you know, Facebook or delete Instagram or let's just say the photos get lost, I don't want to lose those pictures of my daughter. And I know I probably should put them on a cloud, but there's so many pictures. I, I literally would be it's something I would have to do over a period of time. It's that many pictures. Um, thousands, really. But photo albums were the joint, man. I mean, like, I could show you photo albums of me and you'd be like, man, look at young 12 Kyle in his Easter suit <laughs> back in, like, 79. And I was sharp. And, you know, sometimes we put up those pictures for Throwback Thursday or a Flashback Friday or whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah, photo albums, they don't exist anymore, man. And I mean, they're non-existent now because the photos are in our phones now. So it kind of is what it is. Um, let me see. Let me think of something else. One more. Um, remember? Do you remember reading the newspaper to find out the time when the movie started? Man, listen, that was everything. Like, you, there was no internet. So, and you didn't want to just show up at the movie theater because, listen... If Star Wars was coming out and you were going to Star Wars on Saturday, you knew everybody else was going. So you wanted to kind of pick a time where you could go and it wasn't a gazillion people at the theater, right? So you had to look at the newspaper and see what time, you know, what times it was being shown or what have you like that and pick a theater. And you, there was no such thing as buying the tickets ahead of time. I mean, I guess you probably could. You probably, I never did it, but you probably could have gone to the theater at noon and bought tickets for the nine o'clock show. I guess you probably could if you wanted to. A lot of people didn't do that because I mean, why? <laughs> if you're going to the nine o'clock show, you just show up at eight o'clock and get your ticket. Um, but yeah, looking at the show times in the newspaper were everything. Um, in conclusion, man, I, I just wanted to go back and just think about times when it was just a little bit more simpler. Uh, those times are precious and especially that as I get older I realize like just how important those times were um technology makes things a whole lot easier but you lose some nostalgia I think to some degree but that being said I'm glad that we lived through that era I'm glad that everything that I mentioned uh I could look back on and marvel at how we dealt with it or how we you know got through or got by with it and again it was simpler times and I just wanted to take you guys on a journey and live that simple life with me because life was simple back then like Wu-Tang said and uh and, and it's always good to look back on it because a lot of that stuff made us who we are today ladies and gentlemen that's gonna do it for me thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast 
If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Wherever you're listening, hit the subscribe button uh, and follow us and follow us. This podcast drops every Thursday at midnight and every Sunday at midnight. Uh, We have a YouTube channel. Uh, If you're on YouTube, thank you for watching again. Appreciate it. Uh, Subscribe there as well. You can leave comments. I love reading the comments. I do respond to the comments. Um, YouTube, the great thing about our YouTube channel is that we have both audio and video. uh, If you want to watch or listen there as well. Uh, If you're on social media, follow me on social media at 12 Kyle across the board at 12 Kyle podcast. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, threads, and TikTok, (laughs) just to name a few. Um, What else? Oh, yeah. If you'd like to financially support the show, a couple of ways you can do that. You can hit us up on Cash App, dollar sign, T-W-E-L-V-E-K-Y-L-E. And and if you look in the description box, there's a link that says merch. Click that link. You can buy 12 Kyle podcast T-shirts, posters, hoodies, and coffee mugs for the low, low price. And last but not least, I have a new baby. Not literally, not literally, but figuratively, I have a new baby. It is called the Rap Soul Podcast. It is the intersection of rap and soul music from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, dealing with music and artists from that particular era. It's where I'm going to talk about a lot of music over there. So if you're a fan of that time frame, fan of that, that era, tap in follow it you can follow it and listen and tune in wherever you're finding this podcast as well uh, but the rap soul podcast that drops every monday at midnight again that's gonna do it for me i am your boy 12 kyle i'll catch you guys next time Five thousand. Cheers. thanks again for listening to this episode of the 12 kyle podcast if you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and share this podcast with a friend who needs the 12 Kyle podcast in their life. Every listen, every download, and every share helps us grow. Thanks for being a part of the 12 Kyle podcast community. We appreciate your support. We will catch you next time. 5,000.